Crisis brings out the best in some and the worst in others. That's how it works. It makes you or breaks you. For some, Corona is bringing out the worst. Standing in supermarket lines, elbowing each other for the next thing that you can hoard for four months from now. Circulating panic and hysteria through WhatsApp so that your friends can wake up and be more nervous. And for others, it brings out the best. We had a bar mitzvah this weekend of a family who had planned this for months, only to be told by their local rabbis that they had to have it in a tent in their backyard, open and airy, invite very few people. And the response to, that they had after doing it with class and grace was, hey, by the way, we're keeping up the tent, so if anybody needs a wedding or something, they can use it in the backyard. They can use what we have to help other people. People calling each other and saying, I set up for 300, only 50 showed up. Where can I donate the rest of my things to? Calls online packages to those that had uh, things going on, older relatives, you're seeing it, the best in people. But there's one trait that we need to bring out now. I think this is the most important trait that comes out in challenge. In fact, this is the trait that was focused on by one of the greatest Jews of all time, a man named King David. During the reign of King David, he had a plague that killed many people. And he instituted a very interesting response to that plague. It's something called a hundred blessings, an obligation that each and every one of us make a hundred blessings day. And in fact, the rabbis teach us that one of the greatest safeguards against crisis and challenge is making sure you get to a hundred blessings a day. And if you pray and if you bless before or after the food, you get there or you get really close. And you should be careful to make sure you get there, especially now. But the question is why? What? Why a hundred blessings? Doesn't it feel like it's the distracting? Like focus on the challenge, focus on the crisis. Why are you? Why are you diverting the attention to a hundred blessings? And the answer that I heard, I thought was very powerful. It's that a hundred blessings or, or blessings is actually getting underneath the lessons of crisis. When crisis hits, when challenge hits, what, is it, what does it do? So at first, it, it, we have to deal with it. But if you really get underneath it, what a crisis is supposed to do, what a challenge is supposed to do, is enable you to be more appreciative of something that you may have taken for granted. If someone gets sick, they start to appreciate health like they never did before. If somebody loses a family member, they start appreciating that family member that they never did before. right? If you lose power in your house, you start to appreciate the fact that you can turn on the lights before the blackout. What a crisis, what a challenge is supposed to do, the lesson of a challenge, is it allows a person to appreciate that which they never thought to appreciate before. If Corona is teaching us anything, is that who would have thought to appreciate just regular society? Like who would have thought that like getting on a train or a plane or walking it outside or shaking someone's hand or just being in a group, like, oh my, who would have thought to appreciate that? Just regular functioning society. And Corona is teaching us, hey, you don't take that for granted. Because one of the most powerful lessons in crisis is that crisis is supposed to teach us gratitude. How to be more grateful for things that we never thought to be grateful for. And when you learn the lessons of something, in many cases, it stems it from coming in the first place. Because you've already learned the lesson of it. It's almost like an, a, a protection against it. And maybe that's what King David was doing. What King David was doing was to turning to God and going, I got it, I got it. We, we haven't been appreciative enough. Let's learn the lessons and let's increase our gratitude. A hundred blessings a day as a response to challenge. Challenge isn't going to break us. It's going to make us more appreciative. And when we can become more appreciative, we'll be better once this challenge passes forever. That's the lesson that we have right now. The opportunity that we have right now is gratitude. Try it. Try during now. I mean, we're sitting in our homes. Many people are just spending their homes. Try now to take the time and practice gratitude for everything. Imagine going around the, the table in your home and getting to a hundred things that everyone's grateful for. Can you imagine the impact it'll have on your family if people now are practicing what it means to be grateful for the smallest things? If we can teach ourselves and each other that we're going to take nothing for granted from now on. If we can use this challenge as a time to become more grateful, it's going to make us. And when this is over, we're going to become people that we couldn't even recognize. We'll be grateful for every little thing. We'll be happier and better from it.